Hello, everyone. We're back from our short intermission here. We have Primal Pizza is going to be running a blue Paton Pass for us. So, uh, Primal, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Groucho. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is a little known game. I don't know if you've heard of it called Pokemon Blue. This is a pretty interesting category of it called Baton Pass. And I'm going to just give a uh, kind of a countdown and then explain the rules as we're going through the start. So, uh, if we're ready, uh, three, two, one, go. All right, so Baton Pass is a really interesting category. It can kind of be applied across virtually any Pokemon game. Uh, so in Baton Pass, you have to use a different Pokemon family to defeat every major important fight. So what I mean by major important fight is uh, the eight gym leaders in this game, and then the four Elite Four members, and then the champion all have to be defeated with a different Pokemon family. And what I mean by Pokemon family as opposed to just a different Pokemon is that Say I use, like, Squirtle for Brock. That would lock off Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise from any future gym leaders. So because of that, we're going to be uh, catching a lot of Pokemon this run. A lot more than you'd see in a normal Glitchless run. And of course, this is Glitchless. I figured I should probably mention that since this is Gen 1, notorious for having some really interesting Glitch categories, but this is, uh, this is not one of them. So, uh, I'm going to be picking Squirtle, as you probably thought, since this is a glitchless Pokemon Red and Blue run. And the reason for that is just Squirtle is uh, by far the best Pokemon at dealing with Brock. It gets uh, the best move in the game, Bubble, at level 8, most powerful move in the game at a staggering 20 base power, just tears through Brock's Pokemon due to being four times super effective. Whereas Bulbasaur, you'd think it'd be good against Brock, but it doesn't really get a damaging Grass-type move until level 13. I am, uh, hmm. What counts as a Major Trainer? Uh, Major Trainers uh, kind of vary based on the game. But in this game, uh, it's the eight Gym Leaders, the four Elite Four members, and then the Champion. So this fight can be kind of awful, you see, I got Growl turn 1 into Tackle Crit, that is one of the worst things that can happen. Uh, this Bulbasaur has Tackle and Growl and can use either at random. We want to see as many Tackles as possible, uh, as long as it doesn't like kill us. I did pick up a Potion for safety, which we actually might need to use if Bulbasaur gets another Tackle off, which will be really funny. Yes, correct. Giovanni and non-gym appearances would not require a unique main. As we'll see, we're going to fight Giovanni a couple different times. Alright, didn't need to use the potion, thankfully. Uh, I'm going to be checking my Squirtle's stats right here, mostly special stat. Uh, ooh, looks like we got good attack, but bad special. That's okay, though. Uh, you can manip a good Squirtle. It saves about, like, 20 seconds, but it takes 20 seconds to manip. So in reality, you're just much better off, like, getting a random Squirtle. And we can deal with bad special. It'll just, uh... It just loses a couple turns on Brock. Nothing big. So now that we're heading up Route 1 here, we do actually have something to think about. We do need to kill one encounter for experience. I'm gonna run away from this, though. This is a level 3 Pidgey. Uh, level 3 Pidgeys are pretty bulky and can take 3 or 4 tackles to take out. Rattatas are better to fight than Pidgeys because number 1 they're less bulky and number 2 they, uh, they know Tail Whip and Tackle as opposed to uh, Pidgey only knowing Gust to not Tackle. I think I misspoke. But we do need to kill an encounter for experience, because if we just fight the minimum required amount of trainers before Brock, we will be, I think, just like two or three experience points short of level 8. And we need to be level 8 to learn Bubble. So just by KOing one encounter we get, we can get that little extra bit of experience. 
Looks like we were getting a bunch of Pidgeys right here. I really don't want to take that one. It's on the way back. Hopefully I won't be punished for that. Right here, I'm going to talk to Oak from the side. You can talk to Oak from the side or from behind. I don't really know if I had to explain this in the year 2022. It's been explained maybe like <laughs> every single Gen 1 run ever, but I'm going to do it anyway since it's tradition. See, the rival walks extremely slow, about half the speed you do. Uh, so by keeping him on screen for less time, by walking up further before talking to Oak, it saves 16 frames. Just due to having him on screen for less amount of time. Alright, hopefully we can get an encounter to uh, get ourselves a little bit of experience. Okay, we got a Rattata. Alright, level 2, that is perfect. Level 2 Rattata is the best thing you can get. Yeah, all NPCs in this game walk uh, really slow. They actually fixed some of that in yellow. Like, some of the rival cutscenes, they sped up how he walks. But, like, not all of them. It's weird. Alright, now every encounter here is just time lost, so I just want to get out of here as soon as possible. Luckily we didn't take a ton of damage on the encounter. Wow, alright. I see how it is. Of course I'm getting all rats now. Uh, Pidgey's faster to get now just because it has a shorter cry. It's got the shortest cry in the game, actually. And now I'm going to get ready for the first RNG Manip of the game, Nidoran Manip. And if you're used to uh, Pokemon Red, any percent glitch list, the Nidoran Manip uh, used for that. This is going to look a little bit different, because this is a blue version after all. And Manips for Red do not work in blue, and vice versa, due to a number of different factors. One of them being that Charmander's Cry on the title screen is slightly faster than Squirtle's. So I'm just going to save right here. There's going to be a lot of RNG manipulation in this category right here, I will just tell you that. Hopefully I can get this first try. I practiced when I messed it up. Got a Pokedex Flash, Start Flash, and an A-Press right there. If I clear the text box perfectly, this should get in the ball. Nice. You can know if the Pokemon uh, is caught in the ball, if it shakes a certain amount of times. Like, the ball shook two times and I knew it was caught. It wouldn't break out after the third one. It just depends on the Pokemon and like the amount of HP it has left. And a Nidoran at that HP cannot shake three times in the ball, and then pop out. It's a really interesting, like, quirk of Gen 1. I'm not sure if it is in other generations, actually. Like Gen 2. Alright. Now I'm gonna be going into the forest, and Viridian Forest is pretty interesting, since... a lot of the grass tiles here, specifically the tiles with a, uh with a flower in the bottom right corner, can't generate encounters. Depends on the catch rate, interesting. Probably does, yeah. You're, yeah, you're probably right, <laughs> actually. That would make a lot of sense. So I'm walking through a lot of the tiles that can't generate encounters right now. Like, oh, this whole stretch up here, there's zero chance for encounters. Just because I'm walking through a lot of immunity tiles. And pick up this hidden potion right here. And then go into the Weedle Guy fight. This fight sucks a whole lot. This Weedle knows Poison Sting and String Shot. Again, uses either at random. Most trainers in this game just use moves at random. But we really would not like to get poisoned, especially early on. Oh, crit, that is, is bad too. 
Oh, we really want to see String Shot. You see String Shot failed? That's not a Gen 1 miss. Like, you might... Wow! Well, to crit poison? What is going on? Okay, I actually have to heal. This fight is going very badly so far. So yeah, String Shot fail. Stat lowering moves in this game have a 25% chance to fail. And it's actually in Gen 2 as well. 25% chance to fail if used by the AI. So if we use Tail Whip, it's got no chance of failing, obviously, unless it Gen 1 misses, which is uh, 1 in 256. Yeah, so that fight went pretty horrible. So now that I'm poisoned, I'm gonna do a little menu right here. And then I'm going to do another RNG Manip just for some safety. Because I have bad special, I'm going to do another RNG Manipulation right here for a Pidgey in order to avoid, uh, avoid kind of a scenario on Brock where you can be guaranteed to die. <laughs> We obviously do not want that happening. All right, cool. So we got our Pidgey. It's slightly slower to get the Pidgey this way, but it's number one safer since you there's no possibility of wasting Pokeballs, and number two, uh, it's just uh, it just adds a lot of extra safety if you have bad special on the Brock fight. This Brock's Pokemon are going to be three hit KOs for us instead of two hit KOs, Unless we leveled into good special, which can happen, and I did not check my special. So who knows? Now we got the Brock fight right here. We're going to be using uh, Squirtle and Nidoran. Because Nidoran participates in this fight, it unfortunately can't be used in any of the other gym leader fights. But uh, we need a little bit of more experience on Nidoran so that it can learn Horn Attack instead of Tackle. <laughs> Whoa! Alright, I see... I see how it is. <laughs> Everything's critting me right now. Crit rates are based on uh, speed in this game. Base speed. So, uh... Geodude, because it has really low base speed, has a really low crit rate in return. Onyx can be a bit of a jerk if it uses Bide at the wrong time. Like, if you have bad special, like I do, and it uses Bide on the same turn you bubble, you have just like a 50-50 chance of dying. So that's why I got the Pidgey, so we can sack it, just in case. Okay, he's his Tackle. And it crits, okay. <laughs> Everything is crit- I'm using so many potions, this is not good. Okay, Screech Fail, that's fine. Alright. Alright. Can you stop critting me, maybe? Okay, bide. <laughs> Alright. Speedfall working in our favor. So finally pass Brock. Did ever every move it used crit? And every move Geodude used crit. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, GG runs over. Okay. So Brock is going to give us his uh, his TM, which is Bide, which is effectively worthless, except for it gives us some pretty good money. But more importantly, he's going to give us our Boulder Badge, which uh, boosts our attack in battle. And there's something in this game called Badge Boosts that work very strangely. So. Uh, Brock's Badge boosts your attack by 12.5% in battle. But if your stats are changed, like, 
This Caterpie right here knows String Shot. And so if it lowers our speed, the badge boost is actually reapplied. And your stats can really like snowball out of control. And this Caterpie is a really bad range normally with two horn attacks. So we're hoping for String Shot. Good. Now the range is much improved. It, why is it critting? Everything is critting me. It, I did not. Okay. <laughs> that crit there was actually bad. That crit there dealt less damage than a normal attack would, because crits ignore badge boosts. It's really, really silly. So if I didn't crit there, I probably would have two-shot. The crits in this game are just weird all over. The crit rate is, as I said, based on base speed. The crit damage is not like a set multiplier. It, instead of doubling the damage, it doubles the level used in damage calculation. So we're actually dealing about one and a half times as much damage as normal with a crit, but a little bit less because it ignores all our badge boosts. I don't really want to take too much damage this fight. Fortunately, we can just be healed with to full with one potion, which is standard. Just barely. <laughs> and this fight is uh, pretty horrible. Short Sky. He has a uh, Rattata and an Ekans, and they're both pretty bad. This Rattata really loves to crit you, and if the rest of this run so far is any indication, it will crit us over and over again, and it also knows Tail Whip. And then the Ekans, uh... Ekans knows rap. That tail whip is really scary. <laughs> okay. Alright, that crit's fine. That would that dealt, like, pretty much equal damage. Okay. <laughs> so this Ekans knows rap, which is an infamously broken move in Gen 1 in that it just locks you into place and you can't use any moves. We would prefer for it to just go for like Leer or Poison Sting. Unfortunately went for Rap, so I'm gonna have to heal that real quick. Okay, fortunately it was only two turn Rap. Rap can last anywhere from uh, two turns to five turns. And feels really bad when it happens. When it, uh, when five turn rap happens. This just loses so much time, and you probably have to waste a potion too. If we get a good roll on this horn attack, we can finish this Weedle with Tackle, and that is a good roll. We do want to be saving some horn attacks here for Mount Moon, since we are going to need a couple of them. At the very least, we would like to have as much as possible. Critting this Kakuna would be really nice, but of course, these are like the, the one moves we don't crit. These crits ignore all stat changes. So we just ignore all the hardens. Okay, hopefully we don't get another string shot. Oh boy, now we speed tie this Metapod coming up, so hopefully we win at least turn one. Otherwise it could get a harden off before uh, before we damage it, and we're just dealing a lot less damage. Oh boy. Of course. Oh! See? Crit's coming in clutch. Easy. Now, crits are really strange in Gen 1 because depending on the circumstances, you either like want to crit or you could not want to crit. Whereas in most other Pokemon games, uh, you critting is almost exclusively a good thing. Double string again, that's so bad. Now this Metapod outspeeds me, so it will get hard enough. I'm just gonna crit again. That is no problem. Okay. 
We do want at least like three horn attacks from Rock Moon. You can go in with two, but that's really, really scary. Okay. Nice crit right there. Save a turn, and we learn Poison Sting, which is actually not a useless move, even though it's by far our least powerful option. Because this is where I would catch a bird if I did not manip for one. There's a 90% chance to get one in the grass right here. So now we're going to go on to the third RNG manip of the game. I guess. <laughs> Mount Moon manip. And I'm going to be really quiet for this. is going to take a minute and I'm going to need to focus. That's the hard part right there. I hate that room so much. Okay. So, uh, yeah, obviously this, uh... This manip is to have no encounters throughout the entirety of Mount Moon. Well, almost the entirety, still got this a little bit at the end after this trainer. I am going to save for this fight also, since this, since this fight really, really sucks. <laughs> uh, this rocket right here has a, uh, has a Rattata and a Zubat, and the Zubat knows Supersonic, and the Rattata can lower your defense with uh, Tail Whip. Fortunately, we got four horn attacks, which should be plenty. We really just don't want to see Tail Whip right here. That's a really unfavorable range with two horn attacks, like 17%. Okay, I'll take the crit right there. That is quite good. I'm just hoping for no supersonic. Leech Life is fine. And if we get Leech Life here again, that would be absolutely perfect. Oh boy. I do not want to see Supersonic. Oh boy. It begins. Okay, just land a horn attack, or like snap out. Okay, good. <laughs> a fight could have gone a lot worse. I'm gonna do a little bit of a menu here now. Do a few things in this menu. Use the rare candy to evolve into Nidorino. One of the best thing one of the best things about using Nidoran, or why it's a good idea to use Nidoran, is that you can just evolve it so early. And we're gonna teach it some moves we picked up during Mount Muminip. Uh, we picked up the Water Gun TM and Mega Punch TM, and we obviously picked up that uh, rare candy. We picked up Moonstone, and we picked up an Escape Rope we're going to use later, and do not use now. 
If you escape rope right now, you go uh, all the way back to Pallet Town, which is a little bit of time lost. <laughs> Since we don't have a uh, fly yet. Mega Punch is by far our most powerful option right now. However, it is 85% accurate, so I'm gonna see some misses. This nerd fight's nothing really to worry about. This grammar does know disable. And disable in Gen 1, fortunately, it does not necessarily disable the last move used. It just disables uh, a random move. If you get a Mega Punch disabled, you just feel really bad. Fortunately, we did not see that. Voltorb's a really bad range. Okay. I'm actually going to finish with Poison Sting here, because... See, the animation's faster. There's two kinds of animations in this game when battle animations are turned off. There's uh, flash animations, like Mega Punch, where the enemy just like flashes for a couple seconds. And that's actually quite slow. And then there's shake animations, like Poison Sting or Bubble. Moves that have added effects to them all have shake animations. I'm not sure why that is. But those animations are, like, really, really quick. So even if the move is, like, super effective or not very effective, you got that extra text, it's still faster to finish with shake moves if you can. I actually got a Geodude here, that's interesting. I'm going to kill this. And the reason why is this gives me a little bit of experience. And uh, that experience actually will help out in the upcoming sections, just for a little bit of safety. Of course, I got another encounter, which is pretty useless to me. Okay, so we're out of Mount Moon now. We're just going to be heading to Cerulean City, and we are going to uh, exploit a little easter egg in this game. You might have heard of it. It's called the Instant Text. Uh, everyone's favorite mechanic. So, uh, a little bit of explanation. <laughs> so, when you open a menu in this game, the text displays instantly on the menu. It doesn't, like, scroll in. And, uh... That's because the game kind of, like, sets the text speed in the moment to be uh, zero frames per character from the one frame per character it currently is. Uh, this menu in the bike shop does not reset the flag that tells the game to make the text not instant again. So all our text is instant now, until we open any sort of menu, which is pretty dangerous. Because that means we can't open the start menu, we can't open the item menu to heal in battle. Uh, you can see our text just pops up instantly. Uh, can't open the Pokemon menu in battle to swap, can't even heal in the Pokemon Center because the yes no text box counts as a menu. But it really speeds up dialogue, as you're gonna see right here. I uh, don't have to keep it all the way. I'm going to try to keep it as long as I can within, like, a reasonable amount of safety. Uh, this Pidgeotto knows Sand Attack. We really do not want to see Sand Attack, because if our accuracy is lowered, we have no way of curing that without losing Instant Attack. And, of course, we see it right away. Yeah, we got two misses. I'm really getting punished for using instant text. Uh, okay, I'm... <laughs> I'm switching out right now. <laughs> okay. So yeah, instant text is, uh, is kind of lost now. But we can go back and get it. I just kind of wanted to, uh, show it off a little bit. Yeah, it didn't last very long. We can go back and get it again, and it's actually faster than going without it. Until you get to a certain point. Oh, uh, we just lose it for the rest of this fight. I do want to show it off a little bit more. Showed up face the text perfectly. That is... That is what happens a lot. You just get sanded turn one, and then just can't hit anything. Wow, 
We're also gotta land another Mega Punch now. All right. That is actually totally fine. We can go back and get Instant Text again. Do the Walk of Shame. But it is faster if we, you know, can actually keep it for a reasonable amount of time. I am going to uh, use a potion though, just because I'm a little low on health. The sex trainer does not know sand attack, which is really nice. Although there are a couple trainers coming up that do. Instant attack saves in... Uh, I am actually not sure how much time precisely it saves in this category. It saves maybe like two minutes max. In a regular red any percent glitchless, it saves over two minutes. But you really want to keep that for, uh, keep instant text for a really long time. That extra experience I got in Mount Moon from that Geodude helped out there, as I leveled up before the Weedle instead of after, so I could horn attack instead of having to land a Mega Punch. It's a little bit of, uh, a little bit more consistency. Pitchy is a range with Mega Punch, so hopefully we get it. It does no sand attack. Okay, nice. Nidoran is not too dangerous right here. Unless you have been sanded, then it can be a little bit of a troll. This trainer right here, you just, uh... You just use moves and win. Uh, it, but you do have to use uh, a couple Mega Punches here. And it's a little scary if you miss. This Ekans is a range, it's like a 66% range, I think, with Mega Punch. Nice, got it. And I level up right here beca again because of the Mount Moon XP, so I can Horn Attack this Zubat. Nice, perfect fight. So that Geodude was really uh, putting in work for us in Mount Moon. This last, for some reason, has another Pidgey. Everyone really loves the Pidgeys on this bridge. And it is, of course, another range with the Mega Punch. Didn't get Sand to turn one. And got the range, very nice. And we're actually not taking a lot of damage right here, which is really nice. We'd like to play it. A little bit of safety here. Now this is really the point where uh, if I lose instant text from here, it's slower to go back and get it. Which is actually pretty, <laughs> pretty insane considering how far this is. Mankey's a really bad range with Mega Punch, but we can live any of its- I actually got the natural range? That's like 15%. Okay. You usually have to use uh, two moves on that Mankey. Or if you're like at pretty low health, you can play around Mankey using Karate Chop and try to get Red Bar off it. And Red Bar is actually not a huge part of this run at all. There's really, like, not really any notable time where we get Red Bar. Uh, Red Bar just means being at really low health. So you got the, like, annoying Jingle playing. And it speeds up battles a lot by Jingle skipping things. But because you main switch so much in this run, just due to the rules of the category, uh, there's not really a lot of good opportunities to get Red Bar. Not really a lot of, like, safe opportunities, I should say. There are a couple, but I will not be going for them, because that would be really stupid of me. I 
This Onyx is really the reason we picked up Water Gun. <laughs> Just absolutely destroy it. Pinkish, uh, have not missed a single Mega Punch yet, which I'm probably gonna regret saying right here. All right. Oh, that was a misclick right there. <laughs> I meant to uh, horn attack. It's just barely too much to do another Poison Sting, which would be faster. This guy right here has three Geodudes and a Machop. They're not really of any concern to us right now. Especially Geodudes, since we got a four times super effective move. And a good run, how long do you expect to keep Instant Text? Uh, in this run... You, uh, you keep it until Vermilion City. In, uh, in, like, a red glitchless run, you keep it uh, a little bit further. Like, you keep it, you ideally keep it through the uh, rival fight on the SSN. But we gotta lose it a little earlier in this category. Alright, got one more trainer here. And this, uh, instant text section. Not too dangerous. It has a couple oddishes and a Pidgey. We don't have to Mega Punch this Pidgey, which is nice. So there's no real fear of getting sanded. Yeah. Uh, that's not really why. Well, that is kind of why, but, uh, the menuing is just to, uh, just to save for Manips. Yes, I did delete Mega Punch right there. Uh, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> I should have Horn Attacked the Oddish. Forgot the XP makes you, extra XP makes you level up right there. So I can see, as you can see, I lost Instant Text because of, uh, because of Learning Thrash right there. Iron, you are completely right. Uh, we are going to go back and get it again. That is a spoiler. <laughs> it does save a little bit of time. Uh, although there is kind of a dangerous fight. Coming up in a little bit. Just gotta help Bill a second. It's a little cutscene. Good water break. A really interesting thing about this category is that optimally uh, top end Clefable would actually be used instead of Nidoran, especially since he can actually use it on another gym leader. But uh, the problem is no one has really uh, no one has made a Clefable minute for Blue. Uh, if you saw Tepix run yesterday, he did uh, Alt Main Clefable in Red. You got to see your fair share of Clefable action there. And see how fast it is. It is the fastest alt main. And my favorite Pokemon. But uh, unfortunately, not gonna use it because I am not smart enough to make Manips in this game. So we're gonna go and get Instant Text again. And we got a really, really dangerous fight coming up. This guy is, uh, is horrible. In any percent glitchless, you would be a level higher for this fight since you would use the rare candy you got from the guy's yard. But, uh, we don't get that luxury in this game because we have to use that rare candy elsewhere. So we're just gonna thrash and pray. This Machop is a 1 in 39 range. Let's see crit. Ooh, almost. And then this Drowsy uh, is the one you really want to make. It's 28 and 39. Okay, good. <laughs> that Drowsy has a horrible moveset. You do not want to let it get a turn. It's got Confusion, which is super effective. It's got uh, Headbutt, which is what you'd want to see. It doesn't really do anything. It's got 
Uh, it's got Hypnosis, which can put you to sleep, and it's got Disable, which... If it disables Thrash, uh, you are just locked into Thrash and you can't do anything. Okay, don't blink right here. I'm going to pick up a full restore. That text... <laughs> That text box combined with a uh, the jingle skip you get because the music tracks are transitioning just makes that go by in a flash. I'm actually just picking up that full restore for inventory management purposes. Unfortunately, got an encounter. And it's a bell sprout. We get to show off that this is indeed blue version. And these two trainers are the last we'll see of instant text before we do kind of have to menu. And you might have noticed that we just completely skipped Misty. Uh, we don't have anything for Misty right now. Uh, Nato King can take on Misty. Uh, if we use like a rare candy and or like level 25, Misty is safe. But uh... We can't use Nato King for any other gym leaders since we... And she sent him out in the battle with Brock. So we're just gonna make a little detour before fighting Misty. This guy has a Raticate that is a 30 and 39 range right here. Fortunately, can't really do anything to us since we're at, like, stupidly high health. Because I elected to use the Pokemon Center. You can just heal with potions, but I only have one potion left. And you kind of need that for inventory space. Alright, now it is shopping time right here. I'm just going to buy a few repels. And then we're going to go right out here. And save for an RNG manip. I'm going to leave a little surprise as to what this is for now. But this is part of why uh, we use blue version instead of red version. We use actually a lot of, uh, quite a few blue version exclusives. Three, in fact. And this is one of them right here, Sandshrew. Oh no, I missed the, uh, I missed the text box! Okay, please just get in naturally. No, dude, okay. That's actually the easiest manip in the game. You just hold right, and I missed the text box. <sighs> okay. Whatever. I expected to, uh... This is not the one I expected to fail. I will say that. So might have been a little late. Okay, good. Okay, so Sandshrew we're actually going to be using for Lieutenant Surge. Because it's a ground type. And ground types are... If you don't know, they're, they're, uh, they're pretty good against electric types. And we're going to go right in, saving for another RNG minute right here. I'm going to do a little wacky stuff on this... Uh, Title sequence right here. Just wait for a second. Nice. Yeah, so that's Doug Trio Manip. Uh, Doug Trio is insane in this game. You can see it is level 31. That is uh, quite high for this point in the game. And we're actually going to kind of be using it as our main for like the mid game section.
and obviously for one of the uh, one of the gym leaders. First, we gotta make a little detour here. If we enter this room right here, we're gonna be fighting this optional right here, since this item ball contains a uh, pretty good item. That'll be really useful for Doug Trio. We can see Doug Trio just decimate this Pokemon that is uh, 10 levels lower than it. It is indeed TMO8. TMO8 is Body Slam, which is one of the uh, one of the best moves in the game. It's just an 85 base power normal type move that a lot of things can learn. And it is a shake move. Shake animation. So it's really fast too. What do you mean, how can Doug Trio learn Body Slam? It's got three bodies. It should hit three times as hard. A little other uh, kind of movement optimization right there. You can see the stairs are on the left side, and I went to the right side. And that's just, again, to uh, make the rival walk fewer steps so he doesn't have to like walk around you to exit. Quick attack, or quick attack crit by Rath, that's a little slow, <laughs> but it's fine. Big Trio does not- Big Trio just kind of like, smashes through this section of the game. I'm gonna use Dig on this Ivysaur right here. And it's gonna say it's super effective, it's not. The game just outright lies. It's neutral against Ivysaur, but the game looks at the second type of Ivysaur, which is poison, instead of the first type, which is grass. There's some there's some weird interactions with that. But the game calculates damage neutrally. It just displays the wrong information. You see, we're gonna get HMO1 right here. And our name is so short, one character, that we can jingle skip the, uh, the jingle that, uh, HMO1 gives us. We did that with the TM for Dig, too. And it was super fast, because we had an instant text then. <laughs> but the game just doesn't really expect you to have a one character name in a lot of situations. Alright, longest cutscene in the game. While we watch a uh, ship go bye bye, uh, I'm Groucho. I've been the host for this morning. I'm signing off for uh, my shift. Uh, Greta will be taking over as host, so uh, it'll take us through the rest of the run and through the afternoon. So uh, take care. Good luck with the rest of the run, Primal. Thanks, Groucho. All right. And now we are going to uh, we're going to go back and beat Misty, since we would like to beat Surge right now, but. Access to Surge's gym kind of requires Cut, and we can't use Cut without Misty's badge. So we're kind of just forced to uh, beat Misty first. But first, we're gonna get this bike voucher right here, and listen to this guy talk on and on about his Rapidash. He really, really loves Rapidash to a bit of a concerning degree. All right. Hello. I I didn't want to scare you. Hi. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's okay. Hi, Greta. <laughs> Hello. I'm here to take over the hosting duty, which is pretty much I'm going to be quiet and doing my schoolwork for like the next hour and a half. But All hi. Right. Enjoy your <laughs> schoolwork. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, we uh we use dig to escape from that house. Uh, that works because that house has like a certain tile set 
I'm not completely sure why, but you can dig out of that house. Scolding is a 36 and 39 range. If you're wondering why all the ranges are out of 39, it's because 39 is like an appro 39 out of 256 is like an approximation of 15%. And, uh, the game, the game does variable damage based on, like, 85 to 100% of the damage the move is supposed to deal. So, all damage rolls, instead of being, like, out of 16, like they are in later Pokemon games, they're out of 39. And Doug Trio, despite being weak to Misty, makes really quick work of Misty. Just one hits both her Pokemon. That is so satisfying to do after uh, running Red Glitchless, where Misty kills every other run, it seems. If she X defends, you just do it again, because you two hit. Alright, now we can finally get the bike. We don't- we are not going here to get instant text again, absolutely not. I am glad we're done with that. That was kind of a disaster at first. <laughs> oh, nope. Wrong move right here. I'm gonna teach some HMs to our friend Sancher right here. And we're gonna go back right where we left off and beat Surge. Now our Sancher right here is, uh... Whoops. <laughs> it's actually pretty low leveled. Uh, much lower level than, uh, Surge's Pokémon. But... Surge's Pokémon have really bad moves. Whoops that aren't, uh, Electric-type. So because Sandshrew is, uh, immune to Electric, it can really get past Surge without any problem whatsoever. It's going to do a little RNG manip right here to manip the cans in Surge's gym. Which is a little difficult on bike, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, got the biking down, that's the hard part. Alright. So if everything went right, this should be the second can. Nice. And right, now it's time for Surge. And because we taught our Saiyan Shrew Dig, we can really make quick work of Surge. Uh, also, fun fact, Dig is 100 base power in this game. Uh, it's equivalent to Earthquake. Uh... <sighs> okay, I forgot to, uh, I forgot to switch Saint to the front. <laughs> okay. If I didn't reset right there, that'd be run invalid. That's fine. I can just... Whoop. Here's the menu right here. And yes, I am standing on top of the tree. What's the weirdest speedrun of this game? I don't know, some like weird glitched category? Reverse badge order is a really cool one. <laughs> Okay, so now we're ready for Surge. You did not just see Doug Trio come out on Surge. It was Sandrew the whole time. The Trio coming out on Surge is a little bit illegal.
So yeah, as I was saying, Dig is 100 base power, so even though we're level 15, and this Voltorb's level 21, we can just take it out with a stab 100 base power super effective move. Okay, good that it didn't get a Growl off. Growl failed, that was really fortunate. This Raichu is uh, going to take two digs, but fortunately, its only damaging moves are electric types, so it it literally can't hurt us. It can growl, sure, but it can't really do much more than that. <laughs> Thunderbolt, don't care. Uh, scratch. Don't usually have to finish that off with scratch, but <laughs> I guess with growl right at the beginning, you can. Surge gives us Thunderbolt, which uh, is actually worthless to us. Both Misty and Surge's TMs we're not going to use at all. Okay, cuts right up here. Uh, menuing in this category is, uh... Kind of wild. <laughs> Since you got so many Pokémon in your party all the time. Alright. Now this is uh, this is kind of the rock tunnel section of the game, and Duck Trio we're gonna use as our main. It's super high level. It's just gonna make real quick work of everything. And Duck Trio has like insanely high speed, especially for this point in the game. It's I think base 120, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's got a really really high crit rate. It would be uh, 120 over 512, so over a 20% crit rate. Which actually <laughs> kind of loses a lot of time, since you don't really need to crit a whole lot of things. But it certainly does help in uh, some situations. Bug catcher again, nothing to worry about. I'm just gonna body slam through. This Venonat uh, that he has in his final slot is a range 28 and 39, but it's nothing to worry about. You do kind of have to worry about body slam PP a little bit. Usually in uh, Gen 1 speedruns, PP management is a real huge issue because you're using a lot of like powerful moves with low PP all the time, but because we main switch so much, PP isn't really a huge issue, but uh, Body Slam PP in this section is actually a little tight, which is why we picked up the Aether earlier, kind of by Bill's house. So in this next menu right here, we are going to repel quickly and then use an Aether. And make sure to Aether Body Slam and not Scratch, since that would be horrible. Alright, the range is all out of 39 in this game. Well, in uh, in later Pokemon games, uh, they're out of 16, but they are out of 39 in this game because... So, how do, how do I explain this? The game, when it's, uh, when it's rolling for damage, it kind of does a random value between Zero, between uh, 85 and 100% of the damage uh, the move is supposed to deal. Which is why, uh, like, that's 16 possible values. That's why in other games it's... Uh, ranges are out of 16. But because it's not out of 100 like it is in other games, it's out of 256 in this game. So an approximation of 15% of 256 is 39. I probably explained that really poorly. 
Yeah, Pinkish, Pinkish explained it way better. <laughs> Why do I even try? The slowpoke can confuse, uh, can confuse us, but fortunately it didn't. This Oddish is a real problem for Nido King, because Thrash is a really bad rain, but not really much of a problem for Dugtrio. He can just body slam. Uh, that Oddish has Stun Spore and Sleep Powder, so it can uh, it can really troll you. Just use another repel right here. Kind of going a specific path so as to avoid all the optionals in this cave. I have hit I have hit one before, and it was actually fairly recently, and I don't want to do that again. So that would be a uh, be a huge embarrassment. <laughs> Okay, so this fight can actually be pretty cool because all these uh, all these Pokemon know self destruct, so we can just dig right here and it can use self destruct. Not likely to, but if it uses self destruct, it's it looks really cool because it just misses and dies, and you don't have to uh, use dig again. Can we get one? No. No self-destructs today. It's really cool when it happens. Alright, gonna do a little bit of a menu right here. Use a rare candy to learn Slash right here. Slash is gonna be kind of our highest uh, damage dealing move that isn't dig uh, however it is a it is a flash animation since it doesn't have an added effect so it is a little bit slow to use plus it's a high crit move and due to the mechanics of gen 1 because crit rate is based on speed anything with a base speed of 64 or over has a 255 and 256 chance to crit with a high crit move so if we use Slash, uh, we're going to crit 99.6% of the time, which is really, really nice. Alright, now we are out of Rock Tunnel. If we get in this ladder right here. And we got a choice of two trainers right here. This guy has a Growlithe and a Vulpix. Uh, the last up top has two Clefairies. Uh, I'm actually not sure if they died to Body Slam or not. I would think not, since Clefairy's uh, a little bulkier than these guys are here. But if they do die, that would be faster, I think. Especially since uh, that Vulpix has Quick Attack. Alright, now we're done with Trainer Battles for a little bit, and we're actually kind of gonna... No, we're not gonna retire Doug Trio quite yet. We've still got a Tower ahead of us. But I'm gonna try to pick up a little hidden item right here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was a little bit off. That's kind of a weird way to pick up the nugget. Usually in uh, in other categories, you pick up a uh, hidden elixir at the bottom and then you pick up the nugget. So I'm used to the audio cues for that. I actually... You actually need to heal at this setter right here. Don't want to make that mistake. Celadon's useful for just uh, a warp point. Cause it's, used, it's close to a lot of... Uh, a lot of different areas you need to visit late game. And now we're gonna kinda go on a little shopping trip right here. We're gonna buy most of our items for the rest of the game. Whoop. 
Don't need Misty TM. We really don't need Brock's TM. And we're going to buy four TM07s. Uh, this might be a really good move. <laughs> and it might be called Horn Drill. And we might be teaching it to a lot of our mains for the rest of the run. Just a possibility. And we're going to be buying a Poké Doll for another little Easter egg that we'll see in a little bit. <laughs> and we're going to get a fresh water to uh, get past the guard blocking Saffron City from us. And we're going to buy a whole load of X items. X items are extremely overpowered. We're gonna need a lot of X speeds here compared to a lot of other categories because we're gonna need to outspeed a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, remember to hydrate, guys. It's pretty important. I gotta remember that too, but I don't really have a good opportunity right now. So now we're just gonna get Fly. Fly is not required to beat the game, but it's much faster than beating the game without Fly, just because it's fast travel, it's not too far out of the way. I'm gonna do a little bit of menu right here. I'm gonna fly right to Lavender Town to uh, go into Pokemon Tower. To the next rival fight. There is a strat you can do on this fight. Uh, I'm not going to do it because that would be a really dumb idea because it's super risky. But <laughs> he has a, a rival here has a Gyarados. Uh, that Gyarados uh, will spam Hydro Pump because it's super effective and this rival has good AI. Believe it or not, we can tank a Hydro Pump uh, and be in red bar for the rest of the fight, and it's really fast, but if it crits, you just die. Uh, so, in order to be safe, I'm just gonna be lame and, uh, sack Squirtle right here. And then use Nido King for this. It is a little bit lame and sad doing that, but you kinda gotta, kinda gotta do it for safety. Wow, Nido King survived. <laughs> Alright. Good, Nido King put in some work. Now we can just finish this off with a, bo with a uh, body slam. And the rest of the fight is no problem. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Thunderbolt would have killed Gyarados since, we're, since uh, Nido King is so low leveled. Squirtle will be remembered. He uh, sacrificed himself valiantly for the greater good. As you can see, uh, Slash is gonna always critical unless you quote unquote Gen 1 missed the crit. Which is really sad when that happens. We're just gonna make our way through here. We repelled earlier in the uh, fly menu, so we're not at any risk of getting encounters. And we're not really at any risk in these fights either, since uh, all these trainers have Ghastlies, and this is Gen 1, so abilities don't exist and they don't have Levitate, so we can just use Dig. And hit the floating ghost that is intangible.
I love how your sprite does not disappear when, uh, when you dig. Or, like, use fly or anything. So then it looks like the enemy is just Gen 1 missing. Yeah, I, I really like Ghastly Sprite in this game. I, I think this game has some good sprite work. Despite common consensus. Nido King has a really hard time with these Ghastlies because, for some reason, Nido King cannot learn Dig despite being a ground type with good attack. Uh, if it learned Dig, this section would be no problem for Nido King, but it's got to rely on Rock Slide, which is really, uh. It's a, it's a really bad move. Because it loves to miss. Okay, now after this fight, we're gonna come up on the, uh, the Poké Doll. Or, not the Poké Doll, the Ghost, which we're gonna use the Poké Doll to skip. Uh, and it's not a glitch. Because the Poké Doll's function is to end the battle. And... The battle will be ended. So it is doing its intended function. Do a little menu right here, swap super repels up to the top for easy access. And then continue to the top floor. After this section, it's gonna be really interesting. Uh, after tower is really where Baton Pass starts to pick up a little bit. And start to get kinda crazy. <laughs> Especially in Safari Zone, and uh... Some of the other locations. Because we still have a lot of Pokemon to catch. Like, we still have, uh... We still have five gym leaders, four Elite Four members, and the champion we need to deal with. Okay, that crit on Golbat was really good, because usually you can't kill with one Body Slam. So yeah, we're gonna be still catching a lot of Pokemon. Yep, 10 main trainers left. And the reason we're kind of waiting so long to uh, get a whole lot of our Pokémon is because we're kind of waiting for the game to open up. And once you, uh, once you, once you get the Poké Flute from the tower, you can wake up Snorlax. And then the whole rest of the game pretty much opens up. And you have a lot of more options to get more high-level Pokémon than you could get otherwise. guys are Rotata and Eradicate. They both know Quick Attack. Uh, it's not really any problem to us, but it's just a little bit slower if it chooses to use it. So after this, we're actually gonna be retiring Dugtrio. I don't think we are gonna use Dugtrio anymore besides for Dig Utility in the Overworld. This is kind of a farewell fight to Dugtrio. Oh no, what am I saying? We still got a couple fights left. Alright. Last trainer defeated. Now we can get the Poké Flu. Now this next section is, uh, <laughs> really cool. It's, uh, some of the toughest execution in the game. This next, uh, the next maybe, like, ten minutes or so. But it's really cool if you get it right. I 
I like biking through those guys right there. Just a little... I don't know if I call it a swag, since it doesn't lose time. But, I don't know. It's just fun. It's just, a, there's a few things in this game that, like... I don't know. I like doing weird movement in some places to give some flavor, even though it's... It doesn't save time, doesn't lose time, it's just different movement. Unfortunately, we're not using Snorlax, because it's really, really slow. And we would uh, ideally like to go fast. There's a rare candy in that grass patch, so we don't really need it. We do need, uh, whoops, this PP up right here that I messed up picking up. PP is not a huge issue in this run, but uh, it's enough so that we do need to pick up this PP up. And a couple PP items. If you want to see Lax wreck some stuff, uh, go look at uh, Gold Baton Pass. <laughs> Okay, now this is weird. This is something I think I just thought of like this morning. Uh, it's probably faster to bike around here than cutting the trees, just because it takes so much time in your Pokemon menu to get to your cutter. They're like really close in time. But it's actually, uh, it's so close that... Whoop, that in yellow, it's uh, it's faster to bike around. Whereas in red, it's faster to uh, cut the trees. I'm actually not sure about it here. Okay, now is Manip Hell. <laughs> Whoop. I would like to save right here. This is... This is, uh, in my opinion, the toughest Manip in the game. Nice! Alright. Got that first try. That is, uh, Nidorina Manip. Nidorina, fun fact, can learn Horn Drill. And we're gonna go right into, uh, right into another Manip right here. And do a bit more wacky stuff right here. This is another really hard manip, probably, in my opinion, second hardest, <laughs> right next to each other. Okay. No! I messed it up. We are not manipping for Parasect. Parasect is terrible. <laughs> Exclusive access to Spore in this game, but, uh, it's the only good thing about it. Hey, what? Wait, what, what, what? Okay. Kangaskhan's rare, but we're not manipping for Kangaskhan. <laughs> this manip's giving me a little bit of trouble. That's fine, though. I uh, very much accounted for that in the estimate. My estimate is... Super generous, actually. <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> I think that is... I think I got IGT'd, actually. Don't normally see Kangaskhan there. So I'm gonna... Okay, getting IGT'd. It's, uh... It's pretty rare in my nips, And that's just, like, a... Effectively, without going too much in depth, it's a, uh, it's just kind of a random chance the manip will fail based on the second or the frame that you save on. So by resaving, you can, uh, kind of counteract that. 
Because I've never messed it up there and seen Kangaskhan, <laughs> so... There we go. I think that's just an IGT. Uh, I might have been late on the text box. <laughs> yeah, I was late on the text box. Okay, so you can see we're trying to get Pinsir. Fun fact, Pinsir can learn a one-hit KO move. That might be a common theme with the Pokemon we get here. This is a pretty hard manip because it's on the bike. It's got a star flash, got an A press, specific spot. Okay, that felt much better. Nice, okay. Sweet. Okay, got Pinsir. Took a little bit, but Pinsir has been caught. And unfortunately, uh, in this game, repels don't persist. Through, uh, through saves. So we gotta use another repel, that's why we bought so many. And we are going to do one more Manip in Safari. And it is another tough one, but it's gonna be a little later in this room. Whoop. Okay. Let me just wait a little bit here. Oh, messed it up. That is okay. We got loads of time here. I kind of factored uh, messing like all the manips up into uh, into my estimate, so it's totally fine. There we go. That's the right tile, and here we go. Tauros, uh, if you've played Gen 1 Competitive or seen the uh, Red Glitchless Tass, uh, it's actually kind of insane. This thing learns two one-hit KO moves. So it's really no surprise we're getting it. That's all the Safari Manip's done. A little bit of a train wreck, but that is fine. Let me get these teeth lying on the ground. Extremely sanitary. I'm do a tasteful bonk right there. Yep, it learns uh, Horn Drill and Fisher. Whoop. That is red glitchless muscle memory right there. Get a lot of that in this category. <laughs> As you do a lot of the similar movement, but the menus are completely different. Alright, so now it's Koga's Gym time. And this is really Doug Trio's last hurrah. Got a couple fights in here. The Gen 1 Tauros is actually insane. Unfortunately, not, not too viable RTA. But, uh... In a, in a task setting, or a, even a, like, alt main or something. It's not bad. <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh, okay. I should have dug there. If you level up Slash, uh, Slash kills the Drowsy, but not if you are, uh, not if you're level 37. That was a misinput. Okay, this trainer here, uh, not too big of a problem. His Hypno does take two hits to kill. 
And it can be a little annoying because it's got disable, uh, confusion could, uh, confuse, which is really rare. And we would just like it to use headbutt or, uh, yeah, just use headbutt, actually. <laughs> okay, that's great, actually. Now Hypno won't get a move off. Oh, alright. I see how it is. Alright, okay, wait, hmm. That, no, that's actually fine. That's fine, I got enough digs. <laughs> it just withdrew every possible turn. That's why they're called jugglers, they love to withdraw their Pokemon. I'm going to do a little bit of a menu right here. If you didn't see, uh, we swapped Nidorina to the front right here. We're gonna use Nidorina for Koga. And use one of our Horn Drill TMs. So, one-hit KO moves in this game are kind of busted. In that you can use an X accuracy and they will be, they will be guaranteed to hit. They will just bypass all accuracy checks. But you have to outspeed the opposing Pokémon in order to use them. Let's attack, that is fine. And now this fight is free. We can just Horn Drill all these Pokémon and be completely fine. That might be a common theme in these upcoming Gym Leader fights. Or maybe not gym later fights, but especially a lot of the a lot of the later fights in the game. Yeah, you don't outspeed this wheezing, but uh it uses self-destruct all the time because of good AI uh deprioritizing its not very effective moves. So it's fine. <laughs> we still have Pokemon in our party, so we win. And Koga says his badge raises defense. He's a liar. It raises speed. This game just presents absolutely false information. I'm going to do a quick trip to the Pokemon Center right here. Because we got so many Pokemon, we do have to use it, unfortunately. Deposit some of our Pokemon we're not going to be using anymore. And we're gonna get the HM Strength. By giving the ward in these nasty teeth that were lying on the ground that he puts right into his mouth. And we are going to fly right back to Pallet Town to go to Cinnabar Island. Marsh Badge reaches, uh... Which one's the Marsh Badge again? I actually totally forgot. Is that Koga's? Oh, that's Sabrina's. Sabrina's badge doesn't raise anything. It's only the uh, odd-numbered gym leader fights. I'm gonna toss TM24 because we do not care about that and it helps us get to the bike faster. Okay, and we're going to do another manip right here. The NPC can kind of screw this over, but I think it should be fine. If NPCs are on screen, manips can be a lot more finicky. Okay, that's the right tile. Nice. Got level 40 tentacle. 
I don't know why level 40s are in this water right here, but this will make a great Pokemon to beat Blaine with. Now we can just surf down here and go into the mansion. And we're going to be doing a, a couple minips in the mansion as well. There's a lot of good Pokemon right here. This place always creeped me out as a kid. Puzzle's probably the hardest in the game too if you don't know what you're doing. This next room right here, I'm going to have to move left, because if I move up, I will load an NPC that will make the next Manip not work. Which really confused me my first run of this. Save here. This minip is not too hard at all. Since you, didn't, you can't be on the bike in here. The movement is a lot easier. This scientist, if this scientist is loaded beforehand, this minip will not work, and that would be very unfortunate. Fun fact about Vulpix, it comes with Flamethrower, which is really powerful. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a lot of lag. It's got to do with, like, the game. It happens in Sylph, too. No, I was, I was holding, uh, holding right that whole time. I'm going to go right into another Manip right here. Yeah, Vulpix is chill. I love Vulpix. Especially Alolan Vulpix, but unfortunately, not in this game yet. We got Ponyta. Fun fact, Ponyta can learn horn drill. Alright, so now we're done with Manips in this section. I don't need to use another item there. We just got a couple items to pick up. This hidden rare candy has a longer jingle, but is uh, faster to pick up than the one that's a little bit out of the way. Uh, hidden items in this game have like stupidly long jingles compared to items that aren't hidden for whatever reason. Would it not be faster? Is it just faster? I thought that was because of repel steps. Or something. Maybe not. Okay. Now I'm going to teach Surf to Tentacle. This should be enough to defeat Blaine with. Since we are level 40 after all. Now I just got to answer these uh, super tough questions we got right here. If I mess this up, that would be really humiliating. They're the same answers every time. Caterpie does not actually evolve into Butterfree, but the answer is yes. Caterpie evolves into Metapod, fun fact. Pinkish, no. <laughs> there are nine certified Pokemon League badges. I mean, now there are. 
Like, there are at least nine now, but at the time of release... Well, gold and silver were in development, so... I don't know. Polywag does... Yeah, Polywag... Do, does it evolve three times if you count Politoed? I don't know. Questions are insanely hard. Thunder moves effective against ground element type Pokemon. That is a hard no. Although glitchless runners might uh, disagree, as I've seen them use Thunderbolt on Rhyhorn. It doesn't affect it. Pokemon on the same kind of level are not identical. Uh, they are if you manip them. I don't think they have that in mind, though. <laughs> Team 28 does not contain Tombstoner. That is the only one I'm 100% sure about. Okay, so we do need to set up two X items on Blaine, and it's best to set them on the Ponyta. It should be completely fine. Just need to set up an X speed, not an X accuracy. Do not use an extra X accuracy. Yes, we got the uh, we got the super potion. Blank and super potions on his Pokemon at full health. And fight is free from here as long as I don't Gen One miss. In Red Glitchless, <laughs> getting the Super Potion on Blaine actually saves a considerable amount of time. It's been theorized that Blaine originally had X Specials, since a lot of the other Gym Leaders also have X Items, but then they changed it to Super Potions, but didn't change his AI to, like, not use them at full health. Alright, another Gym Leader down. Oh yeah, in case you haven't noticed, we haven't been getting the uh, Gym Leader gems, and that's because our bag's full, and that saves time. Inventory is really carefully routed here, so as to have a full inventory at every Gym Leader possible. Whoop. Gotta cut the bush, it might be helpful. So Vulpix comes with Flamethrower, which is just really, really helpful for Erica. And this old Grass Gym. We got one trainer right here. Fight. This Execute is just absolutely demolished. Also, fun fact, uh, Erica has three Pokémon, uh, Victory Bell, Tangela, and Vileplume, and Flamethrower is range on the Victory Bell and Vileplume. Very good range. Probably not gonna miss it, but, uh, we're, we're just, we're just not gonna miss the range. We're gonna, we're just gonna get the range. Uh, nothing bad can happen. On Erica, surely. Okay, uh, Super Potion's fine. <laughs> that Victory Bell has Sleep Powder. And we have no healing items right now. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna get the Vile Plume range. Vile Plume's not as bad. Okay, crit, I'll take that. Oh yeah, Poke Flute, what am I thinking? <laughs> I was thinking Stun Spore, but it doesn't have Stun Spore. The Poke Flute you can use in battle and it awakens you from sleep. Uh, fly to Cinnabar again. Uh, we're gonna take a pretty big detour, actually. First, we're going to do. A little bit of PC menuing. We're gonna deposit a lot of Pokemon right here. Mm -hmm. 
that is the last we will see of those guys. We're actually going to take a detour to Seafoam Islands all the way out here, because Seafoam Islands has a lot of, like, stupidly strong Pokémon. That, even though it's so far out of the way, it's very much worth it to come here. Even a couple that can, uh, surprise, learn one-hit KO move. And we're gonna start off manipping right here. This is one of the toughest setups for a minute, but really simple movement, fortunately. Well, not really tough, just like, a little complicated. We got Dugong. Fun fact, Dugong can learn Horn Drill. That might be the entire reason why we're getting it. Because otherwise, Dugong is not very good. Except in Custom Starter. And Custom Starter is actually the second fastest besides Mewtwo. Gotta give this a nickname. It's very, uh... Very important that you give things nicknames when they need it. Because that can, uh... That can, uh, affect Manips. Because it costs time to, uh... To have the name print on screen. The Manips are very specific in how much time they require. Uh, okay. Dugong, Dugong is second to me custom starter. It starts with uh, Aurora Beam, I think? Which is really powerful in the early game. We got a Golduck right here. Golduck cannot learn a one-hit KO move, but it's a water type, which will be very useful against Giovanni, the ground type gym here. Fun fact, we have to give this a five character nickname. It's very important. Do another manip right here. A lot of manips in very quick succession. Whoa, it didn't register. There we go. Nope, that is incorrect. The movement for this is a little bit hard. By far the hardest manip in Seafoam. Nope, that's wrong. You need to press A on a very specific tile. I pressed it one tile too early. There we go, that's the right tile, just gotta get the text box. And it's a Kingler. Fun fact, Kingler can learn a one-hit KO move. Uh... Couldn't remember if, uh, at first if, uh... I had to give that a nickname, but we do not. Hi, Slayer. Okay, now we gotta actually do this boulder puzzle right here.
Gotta just push both of these boulders in here. Not too complicated. And we can go down here ourselves. And then, uh, we can do the final RNG manip of the game. Whoop. And if you know this game, I'm pretty sure you can guess what Pokemon this is gonna manip. Yes, Slayer, it is Zapdos. You are 100% correct. Look at this wonderful Zapdos on screen right now. Our Articuno is actually kind of broken. <laughs> Ice type is really good in the late game, especially against a uh, certain trainer that may or may not be weak to ice. Now that we're done with the nips, we can actually continue on with the story. We have we still haven't done self co yet. Usually in uh, Gen One runs, you do self co uh, like right after uh, right after getting the the Poke flu. But we had to wait a little bit. But as a side effect from that, we can just kind of steamroll through this with Articuno, which is gonna be our main in like the non-important fights. Just because it's by far our highest level Pokemon with the best stats. We have an elixir right here that will be our final PP item. Why isn't Slayer on commentary? Fun fact. I asked him. That is a good question. Okay, so Articuno does only come with Peck and Ice Beam, but that is more than enough to get us through. It's this Ice Beam coming off, I think, like, base 125 special or something. <laughs> You have a work like a normal human being and on a Monday afternoon. Alright, I guess it's Monday morning for you. Okay. <laughs> we got a couple of fights right here, but they are really no issues for Articuno. Normally these fights for Nidoking can be a little scary. One other movement optimization, we're going to uh, walk one tile up before walking to the left here to activate the fight. And that's just so after the fight, our rival does not have to like walk all the way around us to uh, get to the teleporter. He can just have a straight shot. And we don't have to watch his stupid slow walk. Similar to the Nido King route, we do have to set up an X special on this Gyarados right here, but uh, fortunately is no danger to us. This fight's free from here as long as I don't Gen 1. Gen 1 missing would be really bad since Ice Beam only has 10 PP and it gets really tight. And it would feel horrible to have to finish off something with Peck. Just go two tiles right to use the teleporter instead of having to walk all the way around with his stupid swag walk. I 
And we just got a couple more trainers and self right here. They're not really too much of a problem. Especially this person, you just bam ice beam. Very exciting. I don't think this Cubone and Marowak like taking uh, 95 base power super effective stab moves to the face that are that go off their weaker defensive stat. And level 51, uh, Articuno learns Blizzard. Really good move. It is 90% accurate in Gen 1 as opposed to 70% in uh, other worse games. So it's actually a good move here. Still don't want to miss because we only have so many. Also, fun fact, level 51, Articuno obviously gets Blizzard, Zapdos gets Thunder, Moltres gets... Leer. Uh, of course, missed a Blizzard there. <laughs> Moltres does get Leer at level 51, but that's because of an off-by-one error by the programmers. Leer and Fire Blast are like one index number apart in the game's data. So it's just a typo. So Moltres actually horribly sucks in Gen 1. Uh, Nidoran comes with Leer at like level 3 or level 4. And uh, Moltres does not get it until level 51. Because it's that good of a move. That's why Nidoran's so good. Getting your menus straight in this game is actually really hard. <laughs> you got so many Pokemon in your party at one time. Uh, we do have to go to Saffron Gym now, but it's actually faster to bike there from Celadon than to fly to Saffron and then bike to the gym from there, because the Pokemon Center and the gym are just so far apart. And we got to do a little bit of a menu right here. My menu got messed up a little bit because I swapped something wrong earlier. <laughs> so I gotta take that into account. Just gotta teach some useful moves. Do this little teleportation puzzle. This is the gym gym, not the uh, not the gym. We need to set up a grand total of three X items on Sabrina, which can be a little bit scary. You can set up two on the Kadabra, one on the Mr. Mime. Okay, don't confuse. That's kind of bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, good. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, if I crit Psybeam again, I'd be really, really sad. I just need to get past to the, uh, Mr. Mime. Okay, good. It's free from here. Can't even Gen 1 miss with an X-Hack up, so there's no danger from here. That was a little sketchy, though. Might be because Fire Blast is a gym TM? Interesting. Does anything learn gym TMs? You actually might be right. <laughs> I feel like it's an off by one error though. Because it is off by one. That would be funnier too. Okay. So I'm going to uh, take the teleporter, then dig out of the This uh, replaces the teleport animation. No, this replaces the dig animation. 
with the teleport animation, which is a lot faster. And now it's time to uh, take on the final gym for the game, Giovanni. Which I think I already said we're using Golduck for. Whoop. Cool movement right there. First, we got a couple trainers that Articuno can take on. We just would really, really love to hit this blizzard right here. It's not the end of the world if we don't, but, uh... Okay, good. <laughs> Now we need to use our only elixir we picked up on Articuno right here. And then fight Black Belt, which is not a big deal at all. This fight is notoriously bad in uh, Red Glitchless, because you're really low health and you gotta give a choke a turn and it can kill you. But not really a problem for an Articuno at high health. And we actually use Peck here because of PP issues. Okay, got the range. Peck's a really good range on that one shop. It feels bad when you miss it because then you gotta use two uh, flash animation moves instead of just one. Alright. And now instead of going around and taking the very slow spinny pads, like the intended way, uh, we're actually going to exit the gym, re-enter to reset the trainer positions, and then just bypass that. Uh, pff, that is absolutely not right. <laughs> Navigating your party is a little bit confusing if you name everything A. <laughs> Okay, I was debating saving for this fight, but obviously I'm not right now. Uh, this D Giovanni's Doug Trio does outspeed you. But, and it, uh, it does no, uh, sand attack. So, we're just not gonna get sand attack. Could actually stall for Tail Whip on Rhyhorn because the badge boost would make you outspeed. Okay, dug a hole, that's fine. That's not fine. That's real bad. <laughs> okay, uh. Oh, this is real fun now. I might be breaking the rules a little. <laughs> just, just like, just like look away for this fight. That would be, uh, that'd be great. I'm aware of pinkish. I don't really have another option. Yep, cheated run right here in PSR Marathon. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any revives, so like... I'm kind of out of options here. I would need to go back to Celadon Mart to buy X items. <laughs> I'm just going to blatantly cheat right here. Kingler's ability is Shell Armor, which supposedly prevents crits. Or, uh, yeah. And fun f <laughs> I actually hit. Okay, alright, alright. Okay. That fight did not happen. 
That was a secret. That was a- that's our secret right there. Uh, I used Golduck for that whole entire fight. And you did not see anything. And we get TM27, Fisher, which is a one-hit KO move. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to take the Pokemon Center real quick. <laughs> for what uh, should be obvious reasons. That did not happen. Might be sensing a theme with what moves I'm using. Uh, potentially, yeah. Whoop. Okay. So now we're back to normal. <laughs> And all our PP issues are, uh, just eradicated. Articuno really does not have a problem with this fight at all. There's really not much danger. There's a little bit, but not much. Because this Alakazam that he's going to send out second to last is going to be a range. And Alakazam being a range is not something you want to hear generally in a Pokemon speedrun. At least for uh, Nidoking. But for like an Articuno that's level 52, it's it, there's worse things that could happen. It's a pretty good range with Blizzard. Actually, don't remember what it is precisely, but okay. I will take a crit. That is completely fine. And now after this, it's just pretty much all execution until the Elite Four. There are no required trainers through all of Victory Road, so you can just bypass all of them. So after we go through, after we go through the uh, badge check game, uh, Victory Row is a little tough execution. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. I remember to bike here. Walking in this section is kind of a meme in the uh, red racing community. Okay. Yep. Got the right dugong. I can't believe that was the first stats check this run. I, I thought I was gonna be, uh, gonna be checking all the stats. That's just when you, uh, when you misclick and try to use an HM in the overworld. And you miss it and just end up checking the Pokemon stats and you feel real bad. In fact, you can talk to these guys from the front. <laughs> Alright, now... Just need to use strength and push these boulders correctly. That is what is known as a swag boulder. Facing uh, a different direction. Then we push the boulder. It's pretty easy to do. And it loses, uh, it loses two frames and a repel step every single time. So after I use the next repel up here, I'm not going to be doing them. Because this next repel steps is ac actually really tight.
Yeah, we're just not counting Giovanni as an important fight, because, uh... We already- we already beat him in Sylph. That's it. <laughs> beat the game as fast as possible. That is debatable, with how this run is going. But, that's okay. We're almost done. <laughs> I just have five trainers left. I'm actually really glad I did not die- I did not elect to wipe to Giovanni, because... I would like all the money I can have right here to buy full Restoras. And you lose half your money when you die. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> it's because I did the Swag Boulder. Repel, uh, if you do the right movement there, uh, the Repel does not wear off. So you don't have to look at the text. Because in Gen 1, you can reply- you can reapply Repel before your other Repel wears off, for some reason. Oh, I should be doing Swag Boulders here. Why am I not doing that? I'm actually explaining tech about the game instead of doing fun Swag Strats. In a marathon run. Okay, out of Victory Road, and we gotta do a lot of menu. PC menu, and we're gonna do a shop menu, and then we're gonna do a normal menu, but it's really huge. <laughs> Take out all the Pokemon that we have not used yet. We're gonna go to the shop and buy 15 full restores. Because we need all the full restores we're gonna get. Our Pokemon are insanely under leveled right now, and we're gonna be fighting the strongest trainers in the game. these on Pinsir right here. At level 30, Pinsir learns Guillotine, which uh, is a one-hit KO move. Hmm. I'm going to teach Horn Drill to Tauros and Ponyta. We're going to use PP up on Kingler's Guillotine. And we're going to teach Fisher to Tauros. You want a lot of move teaching in this menu. And we are... We're going to... Of course. We're going to switch Ponyta to slot 1. And I'm going to save. Because this fight is a little scary. You have to give Lorelai's Dugong a turn in this fight, uh, because you have to set up two X items. Uh, second turn, Lorelai is guaranteed to use status move. So, uh, no fear there. We just have to use an X speed to outspeed all our Pokémon, and then an X accuracy in order to uh, one-hit everything. With Horn Drill. That yeah, should be fine. Yep. Rest actually works. Very cool. Uh, pfft. okay, that's not it. Well, good thing it used rest. That's a bad misclick. But it's all good. Yeah, if takedown or Aurora Beam crits, you're, you're just dead. There's nothing you can do about that. Because this is a level 35 Ponyta. Pokemon 20 levels higher than it. Unfortunately, it does try to learn Growl. We really have no need for that move right now, to be completely honest. Pretty garbage move. Yeah. 
easy fight. That might be a common theme for like almost the entire Elite Four. We're just gonna be using a lot of one hit KO moves. For Bruno, we are going to switch to Pinsir right here. Bruno's Onyx does no Rock Throw, but it's Onyx's attack is so pitiful. I think it's actually like less than Pidgey's attack. It's e it's either equal to or less than Pidgey's attack, but Onyx Onyx really sucks. And we got a whole bunch of full restores, so we should be fine. Set up two X speeds and X accuracy. That is great. Okay, Rage, that's good, because now it's locked into using Rage for the rest of the fight. Because Gen 1 Rage is a horrible move. And now we just spam Guillotine and win. Feeding a level 55 Hitmonchan with a level 30 Pinsir. That's because of some broken mechanics, with only three turns to set up. Yep. This route shows a lot of a lot of broken aspects of Gen 1. <laughs> like you take advantage of Horn Drill a lot in like Red Glitchless, but not nearly to the extent that you take advantage of it here. Like it's much more obvious how broken it is here, I feel, since you're so low level. Still winning, no problem. Okay, this next fight is a little bit of change of pace, because Agatha's reputation of being a troll uh, is still true in this category. Very much is. We're gonna be fighting Agatha with Tauros. Because we need two one-hit KO moves to deal with Agatha. Because she has flying types that are immune to Fisher and ghost types that are immune to Horndra, so we need both of them. Alright, we do not want to see Confuse Ray, as what we really don't want to see. This fight can go horrible and take a, like a really long time, and this is mainly what we got the full restores for. As you can see, Nightshade can hit normal types in Gen 1 because set damage moves ignore type immunity. So we just gotta, if he uses Nightshade, just gotta full restore. Not a good way around that. If he's right, that's real bad. But we gotta deal with it. Confuse right now is good. It's gotta snap out. Yeah, Tauros' back sprite is really weird. I think it was Ty Kevin. Or no, it was, uh... It might not have been Ty Kevin. It was either Ty Kevin or Matt that described it as Kirby with a Tauros power, and now I can't unsee it. Like, did I snap out? I actually didn't see. Okay, I did. Alright, this fight's free from here. Luckily, I didn't get trolled too hard. Only used a couple full restores. But we are level 29 right now. Fighting level 50s Pokemon, like mid to late level 50. She even has a level 6. So, this is just insane. Oh, should have used Horn Drill there. I used Fisher by mistake. That is no problem though. Uh, Fisher just has an extra text box on Artbok because it says it's super effective. No, tape effectiveness does not matter with one hit KO moves, unless it's an immunity. Alright. <laughs> Agatha's done with, and now we got Lance, which is why we picked up Articuno. I would like to heal Articuno first. Wait, did it even... Do I even need... No, I don't even need heal because I took the center. Lance is not that dangerous of a fight in this category, really. It feels weird not saving for Lance, because I'm so used to red, but... Uh, it's... It, this is an okay fight with Articuno. Can die. It's not likely, though. You get, like, Leer into Hyper Beam. That just... That really sucks. 
Okay. Should be good. Now it's got to recharge. Alright. As long as we hit this blizzard. Should be good for the rest of the fight. Oh wait, no, I can, I can, I could have just used Ice Beam. I forgot I centered, so PP was restored. That was just a swag blizzard. It is no problem for Articuno. And now, if you've been keeping track, we got one Pokemon left that we didn't And we're gonna use that for the champion. And that is Kingler. And I'm going to save, because this fight can be a little bit of a troll. We need to set up three X items on this Pidgeot, and then spam Guillotine. Champion has six Pokémon, which is why we use the PP up on Guillotine, so it's got six PP instead of five. Because there's no way this low-level Kingler is going to take out, uh, take out Champion's team otherwise. Alright, let's see what it does. We do not want to see Sky Attack. Oh boy, we're seeing Sky Attack. Sky Attack crits, we just die. Okay, we got a full restore either way. Okay, Sky Attack crit, of course. <laughs> Figures. Good thing it saved. That is the worst that fight can go. That's fine. Still should be well underestimate. I made my estimate probably a little too generous. <laughs> Alright. Do something better this time. Use like Mirror Move or Whirlwind. Pidgeot has a 50% chance to do nothing, by the way. Oh yeah, and animations are turned on for this fight. Are you kidding me? Come on. Okay, don't crit again, at least. Sky Attack can also miss. It's 90% accurate. Bro, what? Are you, are you serious right now? Okay. I see. I see. Hey, has got really high base speed. Well, not really high, it's like base 91, I think. So it's got a pretty high crit rate. It'd be 90 over 512. It's like less than 20% to crit. It's 1 in 4 to use Sky Attack, by the way. And it attacks randomly against Kingler. Because it doesn't have any super effective or not very effective moves. Okay. Third time's the charm. This really loses a lot of the intensity. Okay, mirror move, that's what we want to see. Okay, just don't crit this time. And we're good. <laughs> okay, alright, we got the good ending. We got red bar. Okay, now the fight is free from here. Uh, now you can see red bar. I can't believe I'm explaining red bar on the literal champ fight but it jingle skips all the cries. You can see I can go straight into the fight menu. Jingle skips the level up. Don't have to listen to all the Pokemon's cries. Just saves a lot of time in fights, but you can't really use a lot of it in this category just because of all the maiden switching you do. <laughs> King was trying to learn Crab Hammer, of course. I don't think we have any need for that. Yeah, it took a little bit to get through the champ fight, but it's all good. 
It did use sky attack every single time, which is kind of funny. Alright, so... Yeah, now it's just mashing until the end. And, uh... Time will end on the uh, on the fade out after the Hall of Fame, which isn't for a little bit. It's like another minute and a half ish. Thanks to the GGs. So yeah, Baton Pass is a really interesting category, and I think it's really cool because it can be applied across virtually every Pokemon game. Uh, and not all Pokemon games have routes for them. I know a lot of the Gen 4 and Gen 5 games have been routed pretty recently on Pass. I know Pokemon X has by Headbob. Uh, and a couple other games have. Pokemon Gold, I think, has a Baton Pass route. Uh, Let's Go, Sword Shield. But there's a lot of games that don't, so... It's really, uh... It seems like a cool routing exercise to try and, uh... Try and route Baton Pass routes for those games. But yeah, it's a really cool category. It's, uh, really accessible. Gen 1 is really accessible to get into since, and, uh, since emulators are allowed on the main boards. And it's just a lot of consistency compared to a lot of other Baton Pass routes because you can manip everything. But yeah, unfortunately this Hall of Fame screen is stupid long because you have five Pokemon in your party, but there's no way around that. Alright, so time is coming up now. Alright. So yeah, uh, what was the final time? I actually don't have the stream open right now. Why did I ask that? I'm going to be disappointed either way. Flash HM for my ADA, so is that... Alright, it, it looks like the timer might still be going, uh... <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> You're not done, you have to keep going. I guess we're doing Japan timing, where it ends <laughs> at the end after the credits. <laughs> oh, it looks like it stopped. 10? Okay. <laughs> that's uh that's a that's a time for sure. It's a time that is uh is finished in a run that may or may not be valid. <laughs> it was his underestimate. He did good. GG. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yes, thanks for showing this off. Baton Pass is so cool, honestly. Yeah, it really is. I uh <laughs> I really like watching runs of it for other games too. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I think the plan here is to get set up for the next run, which will be a Heart Gold Soul Silver Any Percent Manipulous Race. Um, so get excited for that. And you know, the day day's still going, we're still getting started here. We got a lot of other really good runs as well. Lots of good stuff. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was really cool to show this off. I don't think it's ever been done in a marathon. <laughs>